Hi, everyone. Greg Heilman here for The Sound on Stage. Today, I am joined behind the curtain with Jin Hammond, award-winning author, playwright, performer, and general master of all trades when it comes to the arts. Um, I will post her complete bio in the show notes here so that um, um, you can see everything she's done. There's just way too much to go into uh, here. But <laughs> suffice it to say that uh, Jin has done quite a lot. So uh, one thing we're going to talk about here um, upcoming is a show that's opening in uh, Key City Public Theater up in Port Townsend running February 1st through the 11th uh, called Living Incognito. Um, and it's a play that she wrote. And we're going to talk about all of that here in a second. So first of all, welcome to the show. Thank you for, so much for Thank joining you. me, Jen. Happy to be here. Okay, so let's talk about that show. So it's about being caught in the middle between worlds, sort of, uh, between your where your cultural identity is and your physical identity when they don't necessarily match. Um, now, much of your writing is, is based on personal experience, uh, folks you know. I assume that this is of that same ilk. Uh, could you tell us a little bit about the inspiration for this? Yeah, this one is far more personal. The uh, the book, for example, that has to do with things related to my family and the the forties mostly and the thirties. But uh, this is definitely the most personal thing that I've ever done, and the inspiration came from a conversation with Denise Winter, who is the artistic director of Key City Public Theater, and. We've actually known each other for a while. When I was in Minneapolis, she was working at the Children's Theater Company. And then I, I went to grad school in Massachusetts. And then Denise shows up. And then we were in New York at the same time. And anyway, I come out to Washington. Denise, what are you doing here? She wasn't following me, I swear. But we just <laughs> seem to end up in the same place a lot. And so that is part of what's behind the long relationship that I have with Port Townsend and Key City Public Theater. I mean, it's really so much of an artistic home for me, but she, because I know her so well, is able to ask some really unflinching questions of me. And um, she, know that, she knows that I cannot deflect her. <laughs> um, and she was uh, proposing that I think about something that's very... Uh, uncomfortable for me, which is to write about being in this situation that you mentioned where my uh, my exterior physical self doesn't really represent my cultural background in a lot of ways. And I said, that does make me feel uncomfortable, which means I probably have to write about it. You know, it's the old artist thing. So I with a lot of prompting from her, <laughs> I got to it. And uh, it's it's been quite an interesting journey. And we are still putting some finishing touches on the writing because behind one story lies another story and another story. But it's going to be a tight show, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> well, it seems like something that seems, it probably transcends just what you're speaking about or presenting in the show, because when you when you think about sexuality, even and race and things yeah. like there's there's a lot of um, folks who who feel uncomfortable with what their physical um, appearance or their physical body with how they feel uh, in inside. So I think um, I mean, can you speak to that a little bit? How maybe this transcends just um, you know the race or the yeah. cultural aspect of it. Yeah, that is one of the most amazing things about solo shows, especially if they're multi-character solo shows. Um, so if anybody who is listening is thinking about writing a solo show, there is a magic in getting so specific that it becomes universal. So, for example, when I was, uh, uh, where was I? I was in Santa Monica leading this whole um solo performance workshop thing with about 24 people age range from 18 no 17 to 70 something right and the big concern was well nobody understands where i'm coming from but but you know there's one person who was talking about cooking with her grandmother right so the emp empanadas that she talks about uh could be somebody else's humbao, could be somebody else's pierogies, could be somebody else's, but the, the 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 quintessential experience of learning how to cook something 
from an elder. So many people have that, that they're able to relate. It doesn't matter if the spices and ingredients are different, right? So, so the same thing here, as you said, so many of us, uh, if we're not currently, there have been times where we felt like our exterior absolutely did not match what was going on inside, be it cultural, emotional, what have you. It's a human thing. It, it's got to be a it's human, a human thing. thing. Yeah, I think everybody um, at some point in um, their lives have, has gone through that, um, no yeah. matter who you are. And I was, yeah, and I also try and dig for the humor in a lot of that, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because that's, I mean, it, it's uh, you know, some of these foundations on which everything else is built upon um, is uh is so common so um mm -hmm. i yeah i'm looking forward to seeing this and and uh as i told you uh before we um, started here i'm gonna be there for opening night and i can't um can't wait to see this so <laughs> i hope um a lot of people come and take it in because it it definitely looks like uh um, a positive show um and something mm -hmm. that um, we're gonna be and and actually let me ask you that i was gonna say something that will be able to take something away from what do you hope that audiences take away from the show um, when they come and see it? Yeah, I hope that people can pause for a second and think about how we label each other and how that's maybe not always necessary. There's a place for it, I think, especially when you're younger and you're you're trying to figure out why does this situation make me feel like this? You know, it can help to have these, these uh, um, parameters isn't quite the right word, but yeah, these, these uh, filters through which to uh, view life, but you can switch them out, right? <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> and, and I think um, the more we experience of life, the more we realize how uh, tentative all of those things can be, you know, you never know when you're going to end up in a completely different situation and have a whole new, new, whole new you come through. But also that that image, that, that idea that we're not hearing as much as I used to anyway, when I was growing up, and I feel like we need to hear is, you know, all those things that we have in common. And um, just focusing on our uniqueness and our worth and um, poking a bit of fun too at uh, the people who try to put us in boxes and label us before they even get to know us, right? Yeah. And it's one thing I've I've actually learned as a parent uh, is that, you know, because you always think um, we don't, we shouldn't have labels. We shouldn't have categories, whether it's music or anything else, but then there's, mm -hmm. a, there's a certain comfort in that in knowing where you fit as you grow up. And then also mm -hmm. understanding that it can change. Um, yeah. you know, watching, watching my son and his friends when they were 13 is completely different than, you know, he's about to turn 20. Uh, wow. and then as he gets older, I'm sure it's going to be the same way you, you are, a certain way now but you can you're it's going to change and and you have to yeah. accept that i have to accept that and i think we all kind of do and that we can i think that's another part of the play we all can raise our thresholds for complexity in so many ways we have throughout our lives when we think about things that were normal to us when we were teenagers that maybe uh drove our parents or caretakers through the roof like you can't do that that's how is, you know, but now man, it's fine because yeah. we raise our thresholds for complexity. And it uh when when we're in polarizing eras of history like we are right now, it's it's good to remember that we don't have to be quite so um strictly boxed in and how we think, you know, it's good to exercise. Our brains <laughs> and, oh yeah and our hearts but certainly our brains yeah, yeah for sure uh, how how do you life and each other yeah absolutely uh and it's always changing but let's go back to the key city of relationship with with denise so this is the second time if i'm if i've got my notes right that you are performing uh here at key city uh your mm -hmm. previous play returning the bones which you then mm -hmm. subsequently wrote a book uh i guess adapted yes. adapted the play into a book <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> the opposite way it's supposed to be done yes we'll talk about it in a second so, <laughs> but what is it about key city um i know it's the relationship with denise but um brings you back or 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 makes it desirable to come back and stage this production 
There are so many things to enumerate. I don't even know where to begin, but I don't know if everybody knows this, that so many new works leave Key City. So many things are developed there all the time that it really is a place for experimentation and that um, the eye that Denise in particular has for creating great work is absolutely there. So I know that whether I am writing or directing or dialect coaching or performing, that um, something good is going to uh, get cooked up. And I just absolutely love Port Townsend because, I mean, let's start with Victorian seaside <laughs> town. I mean, come on. And the history of it, you know, you might have gleaned that I'm a little bit of a history buff. Um, and I... <laughs> <laughs> selfishly speaking, get to take a little break from the family and the chickens and <laughs> all the things that need to be clean. And I just get to be my artist self. So I, I, I treasure Port Townsend as a creative oasis, truly. And I feel like I've done some of my best work there. Well, that's the interesting thing because I've only come to as I as I keep getting more and more involved in the theater scene around Seattle and and the, its surrounding area, I've only come to know Key City over the past I'm going to say six to eight months, and I'm learning oh. the same, I'm learning the same thing. I'm 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 learning about all these great things that have come out of there, and and how Denise and 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 the theater organization has challenged artists to develop new things. Uh, a lot of the stuff Alan Fitzpatrick's been working on comes yeah. comes to mind, and usually that's that's reserved for you. You, you know about Seattle Rep, um, mm -hmm. Fifth Avenue, and some of these other bigger theaters in Seattle that that produce new works that that go on. But uh, I, I think I, I hope that people start to understand this more about Key City. It's a tiny little theater in kind of a tiny mm -hmm. little town, but the the things that they're doing are 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 groundbreaking and challenging and and if you love the arts and the performing arts specifically it's something that i'm gonna hopefully work on on promoting and getting the word out there because i think people need to know about it yeah i always uh promote it to my uh colleagues here in in seattle as a jewel box of the theater you know a little treasure and they and even with the classics too when they did um I don't know if you could call this a classic, but anyway, uh, always Patsy Cline. Ah, oh, ah, oh, absolutely divine. Just, I drove all the way from here to there with Ellen Fitzpatrick, a Broadway performer, if you, if for those of you who don't know, and and uh, his wonderful partner, Karen, who they're they're doing a show at Fifth Ave right now. They're in rehearsals mm -hmm. for that. They, they do big stuff. Um, but uh, we drove all the way out there for a matinee, drove back. It's a, that's at least five hours of driving. Absolutely worth it. Oh, yeah. Absolutely worth it. Great show. Great show. Yeah. It's about yeah. an hour and a half for me. And, and I've no, I, I will never hesitate in driving up there. Even, even if there's nothing going on, we'll, we'll go up there. <laughs> um, yeah. So uh, as I mentioned before, you, know, you had adapted Returning the, bo the Bones from a stage play to a book. Any, any thoughts about doing that? With this one, do you want to see how that, you know, do you foresee a, a, a life uh, for this one, you know, um, kind of? With As those a little book, not necessarily, partly because I really want to hear from people who who feel like they really resonate with this. And, and, and the, the performance is very much a conversation, too. And I feel like this as a theatrical piece that it will probably keep evolving from audience to audience a bit and depending on where I go in the world with it you know so yeah. um so not necessarily and also I think writing fiction it was just so delightful you know it's uh, returning the bones is historical fiction and and uh, in the book, I could add a dash of magical realism as well and just <laughs> be so uh, outlandish with it that if I um, write another book and and it's really nice that people are saying there's going to be a second one, right? Um, <laughs> that uh, that I can just really play that way. Great. Yeah. So what else are you? I mean, you're, you, you've, you've obviously got um, 
uh, living incognito coming up here and you're you're kind of knee deep in that but are you working on mm -hmm. anything else uh, what's next after this well i go to three states after living incognito to promote the book so there's the uh san antonio african-american book festival happening there and I'm the keynote speaker, and it's going to happen next to my great aunt Prudence's library. She worked as a librarian there for 30 something years. And so I get to to sing her praises, which is just an amazing full circle kind of a, a thing. And uh, after that, I go to Ohio and Minnesota in February. Oh, know, to <laughs> and then I'll probably be going to uh, two universities uh, after that to promote the book so a lot of it is book stuff right now um and i was asked to do some coaching at the oregon shakespeare festival we'll see if i do that i need more deets um and i'm on the board of seattle rep so trying to make things happen there and oh yeah i'm launching a uh, uh one place where i work the the place where i was painting that i was telling you about before we started um, there's a place called uh, Freehold Theater Lab Studio, and it's an acting school, essentially. And we are very close to joining forces with the Seattle Film Institute, another place I teach, uh, and creating an MFA program, because there are very, very few acting MFA programs in the entire Northwest region. Um, maybe two or three others, but not more than that. Yeah. And so we thought, you know, let's do that. The first year we'll focus all on acting, like everything from, from Jacobian stuff to motion capture and everything in between. And then the second year with the Seattle Film Institute, um, and you can go continue on an acting track, you know, do a practicum with a short film uh, and similar projects, or you can go on a production track or a filmmaking track. And I don't know if another program exists like this. So I'm pretty excited about them, putting a lot of energy into it. it. Sounds great. And and we also were able to sneak in a bit of your bio in here without having to go through it uh, like a laundry list <laughs> you know, before we started. So yay. <laughs> yay. <laughs> um, is, is there a place, social media, a website, anywhere people can go to <laughs> kind of follow you and what you're, uh, you're going to be up to? Yeah, probably the best place is the Returning the Bones um, site. There's nothing else that's called Returning the Bones. So if you do at Returning the Bones, at, you know, on Instagram or Facebook or whatever the heck, um, uh, I should be there. Okay, fantastic. Yeah. Well, that's I think it is uh, Returning the Bones dot com, but I will post Correct. that um, in in the show notes here. I'll also post the link for KeysCityPublicTheater dot org which is where we can mm -hmm. go to learn more about the show and get tickets uh, for the two week run, February 1st to the 11th of in uh, living in Cognigro. Um, Jen mm -hmm. Hammond, it has been a pleasure. Um, and I would love you to come back at some other time and talk about some of these other great projects uh, you're working on and anything else you want to talk about. Um, I'd be happy to have you back on. Thank you, Greg. I'd be very happy to. All right. Thank you so much. All right.